lovelies. All set and about to go to work, but I thought first I must share a few tips on intentional parenting with you before I set out. Today I'm going to talk about five things that a parent should not do. Yes, five things that a parent should not do. If you're new on the Psychologist NG TV, please click on the subscribe button and become a part of our journey because there's always something new to learn on this Psychologist NG TV. Five things a parent should not do. The first thing I want to talk about is lying. A parent should not lie to their child. Now, this sounds pretty commonplace, isn't it? But many parents lie to their children. Now, this is what you do when you lie to your child. First of all, you're teaching and setting up your children to become liars. They will grow up lying to other people. Secondly, you're teaching them that adults are not to be trusted. So they grow up with trust issues and they also grow up to become individuals who cannot be trusted. Now, I don't think that's what you had in mind when you were telling them those seemingly innocent little lies, was it? I don't think so. So parents should not lie to their children. For instance, you want to go somewhere and your little boy or girl is crying and wants to come with you. And you say, go get your shoes, I'll be waiting. By the time the child returns, you're gone. Now that seems pretty innocent, isn't it? But this and similar lies that we tell to our children make imprints on their minds that could turn to personality issues when they grow up. So please don't lie to your children. You shouldn't do, a parent should not do, is do not threaten your children. Now, threats are not a good way to discipline your children. A lot of parents threaten their children a little too often. Now, desist from using threats. It's not the best disciplinary measure. Now, if you have to threaten your children, ensure that you follow through with the threats. So if you say, for instance, if I count one to five and you do not do this, I'll take you to the naughty corner. Ensure that you follow through with that threat. Because if you do not, then your child will not take you seriously. And next time, the child will disobey you because the child now knows that your threats are empty. You're setting up your child for a disciplinary problem. So do not threaten as much as you can. But if you have to threaten, ensure that you follow through with your threats. Now, the third thing parents should not do is that one parent should not make the other parent responsible for disciplining the children, particularly punishing the children. By this, I mean... Now, a parent should not always say, wait until daddy comes back or wait until mommy comes back. So when the child misbehaves, instead of the available parent to discipline the child, you say, wait until daddy comes back or wait until mommy comes back. Now, what this does is that it sets up the other parent as being probably the wicked one while it sets up the parent who is delegating discipline as being a weak parent or a parent that does not have authority. Meanwhile, in the mind of the child, there's confusion. Is it that this behavior is only wrong when daddy is around? Is it that it's only daddy that views this behavior as being wrong or what exactly? So we shouldn't do that. Disciplining a child should be a shared responsibility of both parents. Whichever parent is available when the child misbehaves should discipline the child. And we should not set up each other to be hated by the child. So discipline is for both parties and discipline is better when it's administered immediately after a misbehavior. Do not delay discipline and do not make discipline the responsibility of your partner. Most of the times, by the time the other partner returns, the uh, misbehavior would have been overtaken by events. So you don't even remember that there was a misbehavior. And so that behavior is not corrected. The child gets to repeat that behavior and we are setting up a discipline problem, you see? So we shouldn't do that. Now the fourth thing that parents should not do is do not use abusive words on your children. Big head, small eyes, big lips, Thin nose, whatever it is. Now, we are the most trusted individuals our children know. They trust us and they love us. So if you, as a parent, think their head is big and you think having a big head is a problem, the child is going to think the same way. 
When you use abusive words on your children, you're setting them up for self-esteem problems and to lack self-confidence in the future. Now, let your children love themselves the way they are whilst changing what they can to become the best versions of themselves. Don't let them think having a certain kind shape of eye or ear or whatever makes them less of a person. You know, we are more of who we are on the inside than who we are on the outside that we have no control over. Yes, yeah, so do not use abusive words on your children. Do not make your children develop poor self-esteem and to lack self-confidence. Now, the last and the final thing parents should not do is do not compare your children one to another. Now, our children are all unique individuals, unique human beings, created with unique abilities and capabilities. They have unique physical and psychological makeups. So do not compare them one to another. Yet one child may be able to do one thing and thrive at it, and the other child may not be able to do the same thing, but there may be something else that that child can do and thrive at that you have not found out. Rather, focus your energies on helping the child discover their talents and to build up their unique talents, not to compare them one to another. Because when you compare down, you create inferiority complex. When you compare up, you create a superiority complex. Do not do it. Also, we set up our children to dislike each other. We set up our children for uh, sibling rivalry when we do so. Even do not compare them with friends and other people outside. It's okay occasionally to use a good child as an example, but don't compare often. Let them be who they are. Let them work at becoming the best versions of themselves. Let them be uniquely them. I hope you had a nice time with me today. I hope you learned something new. It'd be my pleasure to be with you again sometime in the future. Keep it locked on to the Psychology NG TV and much love from me to you. Bye. <laughs>